I mean, in the in the Navy, you see guys, you know, like I, I had a division of people, I had 60 people in my division on my ship. Half of them didn't want to be in the Navy. Half of them got tricked into the Navy. So like I had a girl who had a master's degree in education and they told her she could teach class in the Navy. And now she's chipping paint. And so she would, she was crying every day. And so it's, it, it, you see it, right? And it's my job as the leader to make sure that they doing good. Yeah. So I took her and I put her in training on our ship. She ran our training. She did a little E3 and she loved it, but that's the best I could do. You know, you got a master's degree and you got six year enlistment in the Navy. That's what, I think that's the one thing I don't get that I hear a lot about the armed forces is just, you have to think that there's gotta be a better way to utilize the unique skills that every person has because it's possible. It's possible to find out what is that person good at and put them in those roles. And there's always gonna be a job someone doesn't wanna do. No one's gonna be like, oh, that, that guy's got skills in chip and paint. Yeah, That's yeah, not yeah. gonna be someone who's gonna walk through. Yeah. But, but why is it that way that, that it's not, they don't so, put in on someone's strengths like that? So I, I say this, like, if I had to take the demographic of the enlisted person in the military, out of the SEALs, just general on my ship, they were trying to get out of their situation, right? The Navy was a way out of a bad situation. Right. And so therefore they're not really looking at the opportunity of the military as much as they're looking at getting out of central Chicago, south side Chicago, right? Looking at, you know, hey, I'm in the middle of the country. I just want to go see the world. I've lived on this cornfield for 18 years. Let me just go enlist in the army and get out of here, right? And so then they, not, they don't worry about the job. And the recruiters are really slick. You know, the recruiters are like car salesmen. They're going to sell you that lemon for 10 times more than it's worth. And you're going to buy it. And then you're going to drive it down the street. It's going to blow up and you're going to be pissed off. But, you know, like what I found in, in the Navy was you just got to figure out how to get to that person. You know, I had a guy. This is one of the best stories I got from the Navy, like leadership wise. I had a kid that was a drunk. And I had a chief that had eight DUIs, okay? So I, I told the chief, don't mess with the division. Don't ever go down there. I don't, I don't need you, okay? So I had- Eight DUIs? How's yeah, that? Yeah, it's just, that's old Navy. Don't they take your license away? Yeah, he didn't have a license, but he still had a car. Oh, Jesus. All right. So I, you know, like he, I look in the car, he going to South Carolina, see his family. There's 12 pack of beer in the seat. I say, chief, what you knowing? I'd be all right. Okay, shoot, go, you know, all right. You so, yeah, just, you know. And so this kid I had was just a great kid, but he was drunk all the time. So he got a DUI, got in trouble, but he was an amazing artist. So I said, man, you know what? I said, what, what makes you happy? He said, I just want to paint all day. Okay. So he painted this huge deck ape on the front of our ship. It was awesome. Like straight, graf not graffiti, like an actual live gorilla pulling an anchor chain with a Dixie cup on like 10 feet wide by probably 10 feet high. It was awesome. Yeah. So we had to cover it up in port. It ended up getting painted like a year later. But like when we were doing unwraps, we unveiled a decade. Yeah. And so when the ships pulled off from us, because we were an oiler, we get phone calls like on the, on the, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. We'd be like, and so he had a bunch yeah. of pride. Yeah. So then when he got done with that. I said, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this dude. So I made some flyers up and I went to the whole waterfront. You know, there's like 65 ships in Norfolk. And I handed them this thing. I said, hey, if you, they paint doors in the military. So like on your ship, like if you got a, a door to your space, you paint it and you make it look good. Um, whether that's a logo, whether that's just a mural, whatever you do. But like a lot of the doors in the ships on the Navy are painted. So I said, hey, we got to do little paint for MWR equipment which is morale, welfare, and recreation balls and stuff like that. So he, like I farmed him out, man, for six months. That dude just, he'd be like, hey man, you go into the Eisenhower for a week, they got some doors for you to paint. He'd be like, all right, yeah. So he didn't even work on my ship. I got a free van out of it, a big 16 pack van. I got 300 basketballs from the carrier. So the carrier was like, hey, we need it for a week. I said, all right, I need, I need 300 basketballs. They were like, no problem. Boom, gave me 300 basketballs. Um, so I did that, like I bartered him out. Like, hey, we need some, some uh, non-skid. Non-skid was hard to get. And so I was like, hey, I need 10 cans of non-skid. And the guy, I've got you. So he, for six months, he, he killed it for our ship. He just didn't work on our ship. Did you, 